About 10 years ago, I was asked by T-Mobile to create a workshop on how to craft a persuasive presentation. Now at the time, I was doing a lot of coaching for TED speakers. And in order to create this workshop, I borrowed everything I knew about creating an engaging and persuasive talk for TED speakers and applied that to this workshop. So what you are going to learn today is my power method of creating an effective and persuasive presentation. Hi everyone, I'm Fia Fassbinder and welcome to Moxie Talk, where we help you find your voice, share your message, and lead with confidence. Today we are going to focus on the first letter in the power method, but before we do that, if you are watching me on YouTube, please make sure to hit that alert button so you get notified every time I put out new content. And if you enjoy this video, please make sure to like it and share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. In this first video in the power series, I am going to focus on the first letter in the power method, which is P equals purpose. Now, once you understand your listeners, it's time to decide on the specific purpose in speaking to this audience. And it's easy to neglect this step. In fact, most speakers and presenters spend all of their time gathering the content and leave out the essential task of stopping stepping back and asking, why am I speaking to these people? And what do I want to accomplish with them? So you can avoid that show up and throw up mentality by making sure you find your message. And in order to find your message of your talk, you need to start with why. One formidable thought leader in the idea of presentation messaging is Simon Sinek, who wrote the bestseller, Start With Why, and did a TED talk on the idea as well that went viral. Sinek says that companies and leaders that have great influence like Steve Jobs and Apple start with the why. They use the why of what they do to inspire and motivate people to do amazing things. We need to be able to answer their why to create our message and a message that sticks. So starting with what is much easier, I know that, but it won't get to the heart of your message. Cynic's famous quote, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So why does your topic and your opinion matter? Why is it important for your audience? When you're clear on why your idea matters and why it should matter to your audience, you'll be able to identify your core message. Here's a new way to think about your talk. Identify where your audience is before your talk, and then set a goal for where you'd like them to be after your talk. <laughs> it's so fundamental and straightforward, you would think that every presenter would do this and understand this concept. But unfortunately, most presenters prepare their talks by gathering information and facts and never even thinking in terms of how to change the audience. Most of us, we think that if we just give the audience content, we've done our jobs. But just because we say or even show information to an audience doesn't mean they'll embrace it or take action on it. We call this beginning with the end in mind because you're thinking about how the audience should react to your talk at the end and everything else is guided by that. I love the quote by Dale Carnegie, a talk is a voyage with purpose and must be charted. The man or woman who starts out going nowhere generally gets there. <laughs> okay, now that we've established the need to start with why, let's talk about how you actually do that. And the answer is audience analysis. Once you've done some audience analysis, it's an easy next step to design the purpose that will work for both you and for your audience. Now, there are hundreds of audience analysis questions that you can ask yourself, and you should definitely take some time up front to do the audience analysis. But if time is of the essence, which it probably should be, and it probably is, there are a couple questions that are my do not pass go, must ask questions for audience analysis. 
meaning I never start crafting a presentation until I can answer the following questions about my audience. And those questions are, what do I want my audience to do? What do I want my audience to know? What do I want my audience to feel? And finally, what do I want my audience to remember? Now, let me spend a little time explaining how to use these questions. First of all, you're really asking yourself about how you want the audience to respond at the end of the talk. Remember, we begin with the end in mind. So you're really asking yourself, what do you want your audience to do at the end of the presentation? And remember that all presentations should have a call to action, all of them. Leaving an audience hanging without a call to action is like going to a restaurant and not being offered a dessert or coffee menu. It feels incomplete. Your audience wants that from you. So whether you're suggesting that they start doing something or stop doing something or think about something or say something, it's the presenter's responsibility to give a solid call to action at the end of the presentation. Remember, these are purpose-driven talks, which means that we are providing information for the purpose of transforming the audience. Now, once you understand what you want your audience to do at the end of the presentation, you need to ask yourself, what do they need to know? And I don't mean what information do they need to know in general. I mean, what information do they need to know in order to do what you want them to do? Asking this question of yourself is a way that will really help you narrow down the data and the stats and the information you include in your presentation. So you're not just cramming it and overloading it with information that is really not directly related to your call to action and your purpose. So next question is, how do you want your audience to feel? This is something that presenters rarely think about it. But if you do, you're sure to create a talk that's engaging because as we know, when an audience feels something, they remember it. So do you want your audience to feel inspired? Do you want to calm them down and let them know that they're in good hands? Do you want them to feel a little anger to get them to take action on something? The tone of your presentation will really depend on your answer to this question of what you want them to feel. And last but not least, what do you want your audience to remember? Let's face it, we all wish that audiences would remember everything we say, but if they only remember one thing, one idea, what would that one thing be? And this is directly borrowed from my time working on TED Talks. When I coach TED speakers, I always talk about the one big idea. Business presentations are no different. In order to transform our audience, we go deep on that one big idea instead of wide. So everything that is not related to that one big idea is not in this talk. Now, when we think about audience analysis and these questions, what do we want them to feel is actually answered in the introduction where we set the tone. What do we want them to know is actually answered in the body of the presentation where we give them the meat of the, the presentation and all the information. And what we want them to do and remember is established in the closing and the bridge. You don't really need to know any of that now for this video, but just file it away for later. For now, your deliberate practice is to answer those audience analysis questions for a talk that you are working on. And this is a way to make sure that your presentation is purpose-driven and action-oriented. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to share it, like it, give it to somebody you know who's preparing for a presentation. And until next time, make sure to live brilliantly, lead boldly, and speak with Moxie.